Hello everyone, I'm Matt. Welcome to my corner of gem cutting. Here I have a good size raw Montana sapphire. The rough piece weighs 10 and a half carats, which is an uncommon size to find. I would have loved to find a piece like this myself, but this is someone else's find. I'm just doing the cutting for them. I position the piece with the sloped corner facing up, serving as a kind of natural preform for the pavilion of the stone, leading down to a larger face, which will serve for forming the girdle and crown of the sapphire. Because this is a high value piece, I form a girdle outline before I design the cut. I do this so I can optimize the cut to the stone rather than just cutting it using a predetermined diagram, which would most likely not have as high of a yield. I follow the stone's general shape to place the girdle facets. I want to keep the shape symmetrical, so when I cut one girdle facet, I cut matching ones evenly around the stone. After cutting in the girdle evenly, the sapphire took on an oval shape. Oval is a very common cut shape for sapphire, though this piece's cut is going to be a lot more unique than the normal cut. I'll use the measurements of the length, width, and depth in creating a cut for this piece. I've been using the GemCAD program on the computer for making fasting diagrams. I use the length to width ratio that I got from measuring the stone to accurately place the corresponding girdle facets that create the length and width measurements. The other girdle facets I place in the program to match as close as I can to how they looked on the stone outline. After the outline is matched, I can get to work designing a cut. The angles and positions of facets affect the way light reflects in a stone. Ideally, the light that enters the stone from the top side will reflect back out the top, giving a cut gemstone its bright optical properties. If the angle of a facet is too shallow compared to the light hitting it, the light passes through and escapes the stone. I could save more weight by rounding in the pavilion with facets that fall below the critical angle for the light return, but I don't want to sacrifice the beauty that a cut can bring out in a gemstone for a little extra weight retention. Finishing the first take at designing the cut, I can check its optical properties using a rendering program to see how well the cut performs. I don't like the light performance towards the upper and lower edges of the stone, so I continue to modify and adjust the diagram until it turns out the way I want while staying close to the depth of the rough I am working with. All right, I got the diagram made. Took forever, over two hours. Ready to get going on this. I use a 600 grit lap to lightly go back over the girdle and cut in all of the pavilion facets. A little more about this stone. This piece was found at the Blue Drill Sapphire Mine located on the El Dorado Bar near Helena, Montana. It was found by someone going through the painted gravel just like we like to do on our trips to Montana. You can see what that is like in my video about finding sapphires at a couple of the sapphire mines there. I have found a piece over there that was over 10 carats before, but it was not facet quality. It was nearly opaque and very fractured up. This piece though is fairly nice. The fractures it has don't run very far into the interior and can be easily cut out. The sapphire does have a bit of cloudiness in it. Uh, that cloudiness comes from a bunch of tiny little impurity elements included within the sapphire crystal itself. The clarity and light return will be impacted to some extent by this. Following the 600 grit, I used 3000 diamond grit on a tin alloy lap for the pre-polish. When the light shines just right on them from one direction, some of the clusters of tiny inclusions really shine and stand out from the light reflecting off them. I use another tin lap with 60,000 diamond grit for the final polish. Diamond grits are measured by the size of microns of the diamond powder used as the abrasive. Even though the fine bits of diamond are still grinding at the stone, the scratches left behind by the 60,000 grit are so fine that you can't see them with the naked eye, leaving the surface of the stone having its polished look. Mm -hmm. 
I use a transfer jig to attach a bead dop to the pavilion of the stone so that I can switch over to cutting the crown. When the glue is set, I use the heat of a flame on the flat dop to weaken the bond of the glue so that it can be removed. I start back at a 600 grit for cutting in the crown. I get people asking what machine it is that I am using. This is an Ultratech fasting machine. It is the V5 Classic Analog model. There are different styles of fasting machines out there, but this reliably built mass type machine works really well for my style of cutting. It is high quality, but it is also one of the most expensive fasting machines. I have the crown facets cut in with the 600 grit, but you can slightly see there on the right that there is a little bit of a fracture that hasn't yet cut out. It is the only fracture left and it is right near being ground out of the stone and it needs to go. However, I will have to make some adjustments to the crown to finish getting it out to do this. I shallow some of the facets around the fracture until it cuts out and then make any other facet adjustments needed for the crown to maintain a pleasant look. The last little bit is right at the surface now and can be finished off with the finer grits. I had to cut out some of the other facets to get the fracture out, so the crown is going to have to look a little different from what I originally designed for it, but I can now move on to pre-polish. I've seen some comments related to the weight retention of cutting gemstones. Cutting the facets to angles to look nice removes a lot of the bulk depending on the shape of the rough. The average weight retention of commercial cut gemstones is actually only 20% of the rough weight. That is a four-fifths weight loss. It seems like a lot of the individual faceters are able to maintain an average above that. With my style of cutting, I average around 33% weight retention on Montana sapphires. This piece had a good starting shape and with the custom design, it will finish out higher than my average. I don't consider the weight that is ground off as being wasted but just part of the refining process of bringing out a beautiful gem from a rough stone. The cutting is finished. The crown is a bit different from what I had planned for it, but it still looks all right. So now I'll let the glue soak off in acetone. Finishing up, the stone came out weighing 4.62 carats, that is 44% of its starting weight. The cloudiness drowns out a bit of the brilliance I was hoping to get with the cut design that I created for this piece. There is still some brilliance, just not as much as it could have had if the clarity was a little crisper. The stone story doesn't actually end here. I mentioned to the client that the stone looked like it would heat treat well, so they sent it to be heat treated before they had it set in a ring. I don't have any videos of the sapphire after I sent it off, but I did get some photos sent to me after it was set, and I'll say it made a beautiful piece.